Hey guys, welcome to uh, this tutorial. Today we're going to be going through uh, the Twitter API using Python. We're going to be doing this with a uh, couple of different tools, mainly going to be using Google Colab, which is a really awesome tool, which I really love. Um, but for today, we'll, we'll kind of jump around a little bit, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's. Um, I have a Medium article. This is linked in the bottom, so feel free to jump into the Medium article. Please give me some claps over here if you, uh, if you see this. I'd love to trying to grow my audience, and then also feel free to follow me on Twitter. So today we're going to explore how to use the Twitter API with Python. The, um, this is kind of like an extension of my Medium post, um, and you can see good audience. Feel free to check that out. Um, so there are a lot of wrappers that work well for ex accessing the Twitter API, so like Tweepy, you'll probably see a lot of those, but I tend to feel like many of these wrappers act like a black box. In addition, the wrapper I was using previously was not was only user authenticated not app authenticated this is a subtle difference but with app authentic authentication Twitter allows for a higher rate limit which is a nice thing um, some cool little things that you could do from this and I'll put these into the description these are more just SEO keywords um, and jumping on we have this link right here which I'm gonna open up into a new tab you can see that just opened up in the tab right here um, that's gonna be all of our code so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to try and maybe build out like our own Twitter bot or something along those lines. We're going to be working with HTTP requests, get and post requests, um, and hopefully you have some Python experience. Here's my Twitter handle. Feel free to jump in there. Um, and the first thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and create a Twitter developer account. This will take some time um, and you're going to have to enter some information. Um, my tips to you here is don't give them too much information. Um, they might ask for a website, so give them a somethingrandom.com. Um, and this is really what you need. You need this consumer API key, which is going to allow you to start using the Twitter API. So I'm going to jump from my Medium post. All this information in here follows along nicely with, uh, with what we're doing today. So we're going to jump into this app auth.ipynb. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file and I'm going to copy this into my drive, right? So then this copy I can actually use in the future. So here I now have the, it copied, maybe I want to change the name. So maybe like we'll change this to like Twitter um, live demo and we'll do app auth because we're authenticating using the app, right? Um, and we'll save that, right? That's good. So then the first thing that we need to actually do is we need to get this client key and this client secret in here, right? Which, um, back to my little tutorial over here, you'll see that that just comes from Twitter, right? So the first thing we need to do is, and I'm not actually, I'm worried about you stealing my Twitter credentials. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to upload a file. So let's see, I need to connect and then I'm going to upload a file. Um, and this file just has, ooh, where did I save that file? Um, dot .csv, oh, I know where I saved it. I saved it in my Twitter bot folder. So we're gonna go into my Twitter bot folder and it should just be something called name.csv right there. Um, and so now, I know what this looks like, um, and so I'm just going to do, I'm going to open this file number one, so step one, open the credentials file, right, then step two, so I'm going to do with open, and then I'm going to pass it the name, name.csv as f, and then I need to get rid of the first line, it's just header, so f.read line, and then um, I'm going to unpack the next line, which comes in three different things. It gives me something that I don't want. It's the first thing. Then it gives me my client key. And then it gives me a client secret. You don't need to do any of this because you're going to be able to just enter your keys right here. Um, but I just, so that you can't steal my credentials, I just made it a little bit safer. So I'm going to get this stuff out of my way and then running this. Um, so the next step is so we're importing base64. I have my client key and my client secret key right here defined, right? I'm going to close out of this file so that we can see everything that's going on. Um, I need to format my keys correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 
format the client key and point it towards the client secret. I'm going to then encode with ASCII. Um, then I'm going to turn to base64 and then back, so transform from bytes to bytes that can be printed and then transform from bytes back into Unicode. These are just a um, little bit of encodings that you probably don't need to worry about. Once you have your keys in here, this whole thing should run. So I run this. Um, and unfortunately, I messed up. So what I did was I need to split on commas so that I have three different things. So I fixed it, and now we are actually going to um, start using the API. So to do that, when you're using an API, you kind of want to have like a base URL and an auth URL, or a base URL, and then add URLs on top of that. So here... The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import requests. Then I'm going to define my base URL, right? My base URL is just api.twitter.com. And the first thing that I'm going to want to do here is I want to authenticate so that I can make authenticated requests. To do that, I'm going to format the base URL and then add OAuth2 slash token. So if I were to type this whole thing out, right, it's going to look something along these lines, right? That's how it's going to look, just highlighting. So let's let's actually put that up here. Um, throw a text cell right here. And maybe I'll just make this nice big. Right, so that's th this is my auth URL, right? And I could go to this URL and it it's not it's it's not meant to be hit with AI with a with a browser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send it our encoded key, right? We're gonna look for basic authentication. Um, we also tell it how we how we encoded our, our key, right? And then we also want to get our client credentials. Once we, to do this, right, we use requests, which sends the request. We're going to give it a post request. We're going to give it the auth URL to go to post. We're going to give it this headers object, right? And we're going to give it this data. And when we run that, when we run this whole thing, shift enter, by the way, runs your, runs your um, areas. We actually, we can take a look um, well, number one, we can take a look at what our authentication headers look like, right? This is what this looks like after it's run through, and you can see that by executing. But we can take a look at our response code, right? Um, and it looks like here our response is a 403, so we can we can Google that, HTTP 403 um, code, and that does not seem to be great because it says forbidden, which is not what we're looking for. Um... Let's see if let's see if it worked. Um, it didn't, so that's slightly problematic. Let's see. Maybe I messed these guys up. Um, da, da, da. Nope. That's not right. Mm, why am I getting a four o three? Let's see, maybe I'm going to just have to give away my, my credentials. That might be the best way to do this. So let's see, a way I'm going to do that is, this is not the one we're working on right now. We're working on this one, so let's just do this route instead, and we're going to get rid of this little function I built. Um, so we're going to put in my client keys, which are right here which you shouldn't look at, or if you do, go for it. I don't feel like anyone's going to run with this. Doo -doo -doo. Cool, so apparently now I got my 200 SAS code, right? That was what I was looking for. So only change I made in there was I actually put my actual keys in. Let's not take too much time on that. Um, there's Obviously, there's ways to do this in other, um, and I hopefully should have had that figured out. I'm sorry. But moving on with this, right, so we can now look at our authenticated response, and we have an access token. So we can pull out that access token from this dictionary, right? And when we do this, this access token we can now pass in our search header, right? So this allows us to make authenticated searches. Um, and so... For example, let's say maybe I want to 
um, search for NASA, right? That's my query. I want recent tweets and maybe a count of 10. So I turn this in, right? So I do a search tweets.json. I have my search parameters, which I pass to my requests, and also my search headers. So then I create my request using request.get, search URL, headers equal search headers, right? Here's my search headers, and my params equal my search parameters. Um, and that's, so search headers, search parameters, search URL, right? All the things we define. Also, since this is .json, you're going to get .json file folder back. And then we can go ahead and take a look at this information, right? Um, so we are getting, we're getting uh, tweets back, which is great. We have a lot of information in here, right? We have a created at, we have an ID, we have an ID as a string. We have a lot of different information that we can use. Um, and we can also look at like the the information about the account, right? The follower count, the friends count, the list count. This is all in the Twitter developers as well, so you can go there. Um, and then finally, you could instead of recent, you could do popular, right? So you could look at that. And um, so maybe you're going to get some different tweets back by doing that. Below here, I have some more um, stuff for you to do, stuff that you can play with, um, including, let's see, so we'll scroll all the way down. Um, we can also take a look at our rate limit and see how far, how much remaining we have. And so when you do that, you can see that my, on the route search tweets, I have a limit of 450 and a remaining 448, right? So, and then this is the, the timestamp for when it, when it, uh, will reset. So if you need more help than that, feel free to reach out in the comments or go to developer developer.twitter.com, right? Um, and that's going to be a really great. And so, for example, if I want to do like search tweets uh, Twitter API, for example, right? Like we might go click here and you can see that we have a bunch of parameters that we can do. So we can do geocode, language, locale, result type, right? And so you could add all of these into your, um, once we get back up here to the top, you could add all of these into your, um, into your parameters, right? You can add, let's see, so you could add like geocode, language, Syncs ID, so if you want to get more back, all these different things you can add, and um, then there's some great examples down there too. But this should just be a quick introduction to you getting started with uh, Python Twitter API. Please uh, give me some love on Twitter, give me some love on Medium, and um, let me know in the comments if you have other questions. Thanks so much.